Hi guys, so this is the Thinking Out Loud video and I wrote down some of the topics that um, you wrote in the comment section that we was just going to think out loud together on and have our opinions. I think we'll do this as um, like a preview video, right? So then we can all join in the discussion. So I hope you can join in. It is New Year's Eve, so hopefully some of you will be going out and celebrating and having a good time. And Happy New Year to you guys. Um, well done to you guys. All the healing, all the hard work you've done during 2019. It's been rough on us all, right? Um, so well done us. Got my big baggy jumper on. Um, so I'm just sat here all cosy. So first, oh, I can see it here. <laughs> I know you're all going to tell me. I can see it here as well. Okay, um, so the first topic um, that we're going to think out loud about is um, if we get hurt, do we put our life on hold so that we don't get hurt again? Um, immediately, I think we should put our life on hold if we get hurt so we don't hurt other people and we don't continue this cycle. You know, you'll say, you know, a player will meet a good girl and then turn her into a bad girl and then she goes on and hurts somebody else. So I think that's one reason, um, probably for me, the most important reason so we don't go on and hurt another person um, because we're not healed yet and not ready to get into a relationship yet. And of course, so that we don't get hurt again because you clearly, if you're still hurting, you haven't learned the lesson yet, so you are still attracting in that same lesson, let's say. So you may bump into somebody again who um, will treat you the same way because at the end of the day, um, there is, you know, um, it's a lesson not learned. You're not healed from it. OK, so I, first of all, I don't think you should be um, getting into a relationship um, with anybody else to hurt somebody else and yep you will definitely end up hurt again 100% because you're looking for healing in an outside source rather than looking for it within yourself or looking for love and knowing the love is within yourself it's like um, you've been cut you've been bleeding and then going into battle again um, to get cut again I mean when is enough enough for you right so, of course, stop, pause. Even you may find that you don't want to work in these things yet because the recuperation is just as important, right? So this is why we go into hermit mode. When I say hermit mode, I don't mean just sitting by yourself and not facing um, or being accountable that maybe... Um, we let a toxic person into our life, but are we accountable for the, we kept letting them over and over. We didn't have our self-respect intact to tell them enough is enough because we were scared we was going to lose them, right? So um, we, we really have to accept our part in it as well. You know, if somebody cheated on us three times, should we have stopped the first time and said, hey, I'm not down for that. It's not what I agreed to. I'm going to back away until you understand you can treat me right. OK, um, so, you know, there's all these things going on. So, you know, if you get hurt, definitely, I feel put your life on hold. You don't want to be hurt again and you don't want to hurt others. OK, and we have to have accountability. We can't just keep blaming others. We know when there's fingers pointing at somebody else, there's how many fingers pointing back. So there's accountability in that as well, in healing. And it's not easy because when we're healing, it's going to hurt as well in the beginning. Right. Because we have to face our own part in it. We have to um be account I think what when we first get hurt we want people to be accountable for their actions right and we want them to say look you hurt me you know look you hurt me and we want them to understand we're hurt right um we want to, them to be accountable for their actions in hurting us 
right? But we've also got to be accountable for who we let hurt us and who we let in our life, right? And not just let them keep hurting us over and over again. If we get into a new relationship, are we going to do the same? In fact, I was speaking to um, a lady that I speak to and we was discussing this being understanding, okay? So being understanding when maybe somebody can't reply in a text or they don't have time for you, you know, you may feel, well, I'm going to be understanding. I'm not going to be needy and push them. But in actual fact, um, we're teaching them how to treat us, right? Right from the off bat, because we feel like, okay, if I'm having my needs met, it could be called selfish. So if I'm demanding their time, it could be called selfish and nobody wants to be called selfish because, you know, we're taught as children, if you don't share your toys, you're being selfish and it's viewed as a negative term. When in actual fact, we need our needs met, okay? Or we end up reaching um, outside of a relationship, we're reach, reaching outside of ourselves, looking for our needs to be met. So we need to parent ourselves and that's looking after that inner child and, um, getting our own needs met. For example, um, a child will have a parent to feed them, clothe them, bath them and take care of them, right? Um, so, and love them, right? Um, and we should teach a child to love them, learn to love themselves, learn to feed themselves and learn to bathe themselves, right? So this is what you may need to step back and do. Teach yourself to love yourself again, teach you to meet your own needs. <clears throat> so if you get into a new relationship and you're either trying to be understanding, you know, it could be the fact that you're letting people cross your boundaries and you're teaching them right from the offset that um, if they don't meet your needs, you're understanding. Right? You see, the words that we attach to things have very important in, you know, relationships and ourselves um so yeah i do feel like um if we get hurt we should definitely put things on hold we don't want to jump into new relationships and we don't want to hurt other people right because we don't want to take that energy into 2020 no thank you okay so opening up to new love interests when you have trust issues um wow this is a huge one right because all of us feel like um we want love um but we're scared to love again and that's the opening your heart chakra not only opening to give love but to be in receipt of love right um because a lot of us will be very giving um of our love and we find it hard to receive maybe we have issues again going back to that inner child need taken care of have issues as we've grown up that we found it hard to receive love maybe there were some issues with childhood maybe there wasn't but you just didn't receive that learn how to receive love right or I think it's more of feeling worthy to receive love so how is trust issues um combined in that um because I feel like you're not trusting yourself yet, that you're making the right decision. You're not loving yourself enough to know that you deserve this love. So you feel like they're going to do it to me again, or a new person's going to do it to me the same way. You know, you've really got to see people as individuals that, that you know, not everybody's the same. I, I seen, I posted something um, about, um a man with a dream needs a woman with a vision and the top comment was um finally something positive you've said something positive about men well in actual fact i say something positive about men and women constantly right i'm not separating like oh it's i'm not a man hater and things like that um so i don't so don't let don't presume that somebody else is going to do the same to you if you are worthy this person will take time to know you <clears throat> and that's what you're feeling 
like it's about worthiness it's more again about that self-love and that self-respect usually people live up to the standards that we project onto them so if you feel like um, somebody's going to cheat on me or you're constantly saying to them you're going to cheat on me that people usually live up to those standards so if you give somebody the benefit of the doubt and just be like i trust you they're more unlikely to cheat right um so how do we how do you work through these trust issues i think you've got to give yourself one day at a time i think you should be open and honest with the person and say you know, I'm having a little issues here. Um, you know, I just want you to be aware of it. I want to be clear. I want to be open because this is what I'm wanting from a relationship. Um, I would be happier if you told me you're going to, let's say, see somebody else rather than, you know, um, it being a cheat. And I, I always hope that we can be open and honest with each other. And then you've got to actually take the steps and trust them until they give you reason not to trust them, right? I said to another friend of mine or another person I know, um, you know, if you, because um, he's from Afghanistan, he has a beard. And I said, I made it like, you know, if people... Um, will see you and see, oh, you're from Afghanistan and you've got a beard and they immediately say you're a terrorist. Does that make it true? No, he's probably one of the nicest, softest, quietest guys I've ever met in my life. Um, but, you know, other people's presumptions doesn't make it true. So if you constantly believe that this person is gonna be unloyal to you, then you're not ready either to get into a relationship. Just because you think something, it doesn't make it true. You're probably still quite pessimistic in life and viewing things from a negative side, okay? You just, why is my battery going when it's plugged in? Okay, now I've pulled over this, right? Yep, no idea why my charger is going at this moment in time, but we'll fix it. Not a problem. You see, everything happens for a reason. It's something that can easily be sorted. You just have to communicate your feelings. You have to say, um, this is what I'm feeling, because that's what you wanted in a relationship, right? You want people to be honest with you, and you want people to communicate with you their feelings and um what they're gonna be and you know what you want give out okay and you could say well maybe before i was giving love to somebody because i wanted love back um but it, they, i didn't get it back right um maybe i was being loyal to somebody and i didn't get it back well you know, just because we can love lions and we might want to stroke and pet one doesn't mean it's not going to, um, you know, eat us alive. Some people are naturally going to cheat and have a roaming eye if they're not going to heal, right? Maybe there was other issues in the relationship that led up to this cheating, okay? Now you have trust issues. So for me... Um, how do I personally get over trust issues? One step at a time. And I think like now I'm healed and I'm healing and ascending. I give people the benefit of the doubt. You know, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me, right? So if I'm going to let somebody do it to, to me, then shame on me but I'm going to give people the benefit of the doubt I'm not going to judge somebody um, before they've even had a chance so I just want you to take it one step at a time and really work on healing and loving yourself and understanding you're worthy and not everybody's going to cheat there are good people in the world <clears throat> every time I want to give up on this channel because there's some loser making some comments um, there's always so much more people that are so much more positive so just because there's one bad bad egg there's so much more 
positive people out there. For an example, somebody just commented, um, you've got a white person on your picture and you're not white. You're fake. You, you're not white. Never said I did. Never said I am white. I've never ever posted a picture of a white person and said, this is me. I'm, I'm white. Like, my mum's white. My dad's West Indian. I'm just me. I really don't see colour or culture, religion or race in other people. I definitely don't see it in myself. Um, but, yeah, I told him if you're going to act like a huge beep, <laughs> just because you're lacking a huge beep, <laughs> you know, it doesn't need to happen on my channel. So take that one bad egg, learn from it and keep it moving forward, right? Keep it moving forward. Learn to trust yourself and trust your judgment first, because I feel like when we have trust issues, it, again, it comes back to us. Okay, and we said, we've got one that was, why do men, why don't men show their true feelings? And I commented back straight away saying, um, boys don't, men do. Um, what I mean by that is um, somebody who's acting immature, somebody who's not ready to grow up yet. So that should be a key indication, a big red flag. This person um, has issues too, right? Doesn't mean that they're an evil person. They have issues too where they need to heal too. Again, could be their childhood, could be their job. Um, you know, their job could be stressing them out. They may not have time to reach out and tell you, I love you every minute or whenever. Some people feel like it makes them weaker because let's say, you know, for society has taught men that um, to show your emotion is to show weakness, right? And that's not the case. We know it takes a strong man. And let me tell you something, guys, when us women see a man crying, we bawl our eyes out and do anything. <laughs> we get so like, Bro we get so mushy over a guy crying, right? We don't see it as weakness. We actually see it as strength. And it's very attractive to us women. I'm telling you, it's like a man in a, um, you know, top suit. Or if you guys, um, it's like a girl in some sexy underwear. It's like that for us. It's really attractive um, when a guy is showing his emotions, feelings. And yeah, I feel like society is... Um, one of my favourite charities actually is about um, mental awareness, mental illness awareness for men and committing suicide. Um, you know, that it's okay to talk. Um, it's in my son's school, advertised a lot. So I love this, that, you know, it's very important for men to talk and get it out. But they may have been brought up thinking that this shows weakness or... Um, you know, if I tell somebody I love them, it'll put me in a vulnerable state, so then they'll hurt me. So again, clear communication um, with, say, you know, your partner or whatever, your friend, and letting them know that you're there for them. It takes a lot of courage to get your feelings out um, and work through them. Um, but you know, if I'm honest and um, from experience, if a man, if a man loves you, wants you, he'll be chasing you. He'll be chasing you. Um, there is some instance where he can't chase you or there's other things going on. Maybe he's married. Maybe you're married. Um, maybe there's... Um, you can't be get to be together because of families or because of religion. There are other situations, but I'm just giving something very basic. Um, a man will tell you, you know, he loves you if he loves you. Um, a, a man will tell you, maybe like, I love you, but I can't be with you. And maybe that can stem some confusion for you. And it's just saying like he's made his choice that, um, yes, he does have feelings for you, but 
he's he doesn't want to be with you right now woman women too right um because this i'm just going by the comments on the video so women too can do this i have personally speaking from experience that's why i think out loud um have told guys i'm not interested in you in that way right and sometimes the guy will chase harder thinking i'm playing hard to get i'm not a girl that plays hard to get like if i'm interested you'll know very quickly that i'm interested in you um so i think the same here that if a guy's really interested in you he'll be chasing you if he's told you i don't want to be with you right now or whatever i feel like you should back away give him chance to understand his feelings maybe he's overwhelmed by his connection with you right so you could step back i mean guys chime in let us know like have you never told a woman that you love that you love her and why was it fear of rejection fear of being weak and things like this because society made you feel like you know um you can't show this weakness so maybe you kept it to yourself and it's, you know, sort of festering out in other ways. But it's making you mature and grow so that you can reach out and say, I love you, right? <clears throat> okay, so we have um, self-love, law of attraction and understanding how it all fits together, how it helps us to attract, right? Um, so... How does self-love help us to attract? Because we know we deserve it. If we love ourselves, like if you love somebody and you want to buy them gifts, you want to give them everything, and like, oh, your child, you love them so much and you just want to spoil them and give them lots of toys. You feel the same about yourself. Like, I deserve that. I should go buy myself those new shoes or something like that, right? So um, it helps us be on a higher vibration of love, of joy, attracting, knowing what we don't want is also as important as knowing what we do want, right? And what we will accept and what we won't accept. So if you're going to, like, I think it goes back to the beginning where I said, um, if you accept a certain type of behavior um and let and just be understanding maybe you're not respecting yourself <clears throat> so the universe sees it as if you are accepting or negative waiting um for somebody to come and give you what you want then it's like the universe always says yes right so if you say, okay, universe, I'm waiting for love, the universe says, yes. So it means, yes, you're waiting, right? I'm waiting for money. Yes. Okay. You're waiting for money. Okay. Universe divine. I'm praying. Yes, you're praying. So if we look at it like, um, I love myself, I deserve these new shoes, I have these new shoes. Yes, you do. I have this money, yes, you do. You have that love of your life, yes, you do. You have this person's trust and you trust them, yes, you do. They won't cheat, yep. It's, let's use another example, um, let's say like a magnet you know, um, the positive and negative of a magnet, right? So the the poles of it. Um, so let's say, you know, if you're going to be negative and the universe is going to be negative, you're going to be pushing against each other and it's creating these blockages and this resistance in the world, in your manifesting and your law of attraction because you're feeling negative about yourself. But if you put, um, you know, if you're doing positive, and the universe is doing positive and uh, it's sort of easier energy, okay, right? So you can attract together if you're more, it just makes it a lot easier. There's nothing to resist against. So if 
if you seem like somebody walking all confident without knowing them or knowing what's going on in their life, um, you might even think, wow, they're, they're amazing. They're giving off this energy that, you know, I am, okay? Um, and you may feel like, wow, what are they doing different? You know, they must have some secret here going on. Why do they feel so amazing about themselves? They must have a good job. They must have a good family, right? I can't believe how many people w would think that I should be laid in bed crying every day, right? But I'm like, nope. I'm worth better. I am better than that. I am positive. I am happy. And I tell myself these affirmations, not in lack, not in resistance, but in worthiness that I do deserve better than what people are offering me. So if they want to leave my life, go ahead. I love myself. I don't need you to love me. Right? So if I feel like an external source needs to love me, for things, positive things to come my way, it's never going to happen. Um, that you're, if we're up here, we're vibrating in love, in joy, in happiness, things will just be like a magnet to us. If we're down here in negative, it's so hard. It's like two magnets pushing against each other. So you may feel like I need some good coming into my life now. Um, so you may be praying a lot. You may be asking a lot, please show me now um, a good thing. And they'll say, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. When in actual fact, you've got to find that love within yourself. Like, and somebody else asked about self-love and ego. So I'm going to put that in there. I remember when I first started my channel, I used to talk about um, self-love and ego a lot. And I used to say, I, I loved myself. I didn't. I had a it was like I had a high ego and low self-esteem, which is quite weird, right? So I used to be like, yep, I love myself. But I actually didn't because I'd let people keep walking over me. And this includes family, includes children, includes boyfriends, includes girlfriends, includes everybody, right? I was like, I was just walking around like... Well, it doesn't, it, it, denial is the best word, right? Denial is the best word. Oh, well, I don't care. Look, I'm the best in the world, <laughs> sort of thing. I'm trying to explain ego. <clears throat> I know I had a very high, high ego, but I can't remember um, what I was like, because it's like that, isn't it, right? It's perspective. It's not that I'm a hypocrite or I've forgotten. It's like I have a new perspective that I had a huge ego and no self-love, right? So to love ourselves is to tell somebody, um, okay, maybe I'm going to make mistakes. Maybe I'm going to fall over, but I'm going to pick myself up Um reassure myself, forgive myself for not knowing better, and I'm going to keep going. Whereas ego may be like, no, I didn't make a mistake. It was you making the mistake. You was the to toxic person. And that goes back as well to the accountability, right? So where I was so maybe up in ego that I felt this guy could never leave me. Just an example, guys. <laughs> um, then the guy leaves and then you take this big tumble and you smack that floor hard because maybe you thought guy or girl, uh, maybe you thought that they never leave because you was the bee's knees, but you didn't notice that you wasn't actually respecting yourself by mistreating somebody. You wasn't actually respecting yourself or loving yourself um, if you felt like putting all the blame on somebody else, whether they cheated, whether, no matter what they did, if you felt you're replaceable, if you think everybody's replaceable except for you, you're going to have a huge downfall of the ego, right? So, yeah, I, I think like maybe ego hit a lot of Scorpios this year. I know like it hit me like in... 2017 or something like the downfall of my ego um and then i remember um 
I, I posted a picture of myself or something and um, this woman commented saying, um, oh, you're just full of ego. Why would you post a picture of yourself? So I'm like, well, why wouldn't I be allowed to post a picture of myself? 95% of the human population post pictures of their self every day, but you're saying that I'm egotistical. I, I may be, you know, taking some accountability that maybe your feelings towards me as you don't know me and things, you know, maybe you're dealing with um, working through the ego of yourself, because I always think it starts with looking inwards. Most of these problems are looking inwards, right? And healing and not moving on until we're healed. Okay, I think um, the last one. Um, femininity in relationships while surrounded by this masculine energy of work, school. <clears throat> so this is a thing I keep adding into little bits of videos about um, women trying to be or trying to do everything a man can. I don't actually agree with it, okay? Um, I personally have struggled with coming out of the masculine energy because I've had to be a provider uh, you know I've had to take on this hunter gatherer if you like energy um, to provide for my kids and then when I want to balance the feminine energy it's actually quite hard for me I've struggled with this a lot um, when I meet a partner right so when I meet a partner and they want me to be feminine um, and they want to take care of me. I've actually struggled with that in relationships, right? Because I'm the person who, because I've got children and a household to run and money to make and kids to feed and stuff like that. Um, they'll want to wine and dine me and say if there's a little mix up or something with the restaurant and they'll be like, um, okay, there's a problem with the restaurant. I'll be like, no problem. I'll sort it out. And they don't want you to sort it out. So it's more about stepping back, isn't it? And letting somebody else, <clears throat> um, you know, take the lead. Um, letting somebody else, uh, letting your feminine and masculine balance more. Um, because I think, like, <laughs> women like us find it very difficult in relationships, right? Um, and it's not because we're trying to be the man right? We've just maybe had to take the lead and do these things. And what I try to promote is women are here to do everything a man can to um, balance, you know, a man and complement a man. It doesn't mean you can't have your own dreams. And it doesn't mean a man can't support a woman and shouldn't support a woman because same in the man, we have this feminine and masculine that needs to be balanced, right? Um, because it doesn't really matter about which sex we're talking about. It's the same thing. We need to be in a loving energy. We need to, this feminine energy that we need to take on is, um, they want somebody who is, allows somebody to do what they need to do. But if they need help, that you're there to support them, right? You're not there to take charge. You're not there to lead them. Um, you know, they don't need you to do it for them. I can't believe how many people I do this for, uh, do this to and don't realize I'm doing it until I check myself, right? So if you've recognized it in yourself, you've already begun to mend the issue, right? Same as me, I recognize it in myself. I try to take a step back um, when I'm in a relationship and what I actually do is spend time building a relationship, maybe away from my sort of responsibilities, right? Um, away from my home, away from jobs and things. I take the relationship as far away as possible for that until it becomes a habit for me to be in the feminine energy. It's just like being very difficult to, like you say, in society, same as like, men view it as they will be weak to show emotions. Um, we have also adapted this thing like we have to be strong. We have to be this go-getter. 
or we're not achieving, right? Well, actually, it's very important for a woman to be a woman because we're teachers, we're nurturers. Um, you know, we take care of things. We offer like this love and support and give birth to all these new things. <clears throat> so maybe, um, you know, a man can have an idea but can't get it off the ground. And it's the same as that post I was on about. It's all linked in together, hasn't it, um, today? Um, but that post where, you know, a man with a dream needs a woman with a vision, it doesn't mean that you're behind him. It means you'll play different roles, right? So you've got to see yourself as still equal to them because I feel like maybe um, a woman who's very strong masculine energy and in a very masculine world may feel like she has to say, I don't need a man. These are also very negative terms to say in, um, you know, when you're trying to manifest, okay? Um, these are like issues that need sorting out. You don't, it doesn't matter if you're in a same sex relationship, right? Um, I'm just talking about saying, I don't need a partner or whatever. They're negative terms. It's egotistical. See, we're back to ego. And, um, you know, it, because you're trying to show off the, you're this all empowered one, right? But it's without the balance, we can't create, right? So we do need, even in biology, we need a man and a woman to um, procreate. <clears throat> Some people will be awkward and say, no, we don't need a man or a woman. We can do it with science. But you still need the essence of a man and the essence of a woman to create, right? And that's what you need to understand. Fall back into that beautiful Venus loving energy that, yes, you are a creator. You don't need to be everything a man is in the world. You're everything a man is not right? You know, that a man could give you some sperm and you're going to create this lovely baby. A man can give you groceries, you're going to make him a meal, right? So we get that. You multiply, you help. It's not that you're lower or behind or less worthy or less important. You are equally as important as each other. So the balance of feminine and masculine energy within a person is equally as important to be able to become soft when a man wants to approach you um, and he thinks, well, she's going to go off with some attitude. I don't really want to go up to her. You know, you need to be able to pull yourself to be like, okay, I want to come you know, I want to be able to come to somebody and um, take the stress of my day and come down and be soft and, um, you know, mold together and um, be healed with each other. They don't want to come home and meet this masculine energy that's tough as well, right? So you need to be, we do all need to find that balance because maybe the woman's at work. I'm just giving, you know, an example here. I don't want people going off and off and off. And somebody did ask me about the matters of the twin flame, but I might do it in a different video. Okay, guys. So I hope you enjoyed me thinking out loud. I try to do it as quickly as possible. But like I said, it is New Year's Eve. I'll be at home watching the fireworks from my window. Like I said in my no friends video, you're not missing anything at the club if you are getting your life together. Amen. Happy New Year, guys.